I think we are Singapore at the time when Singapore, Singaporeans and Singapore needed to feel more pride for ourselves because we just came up not too long ago from a situation where people around in other countries around us actually thought that we couldn't make it. So this song came in at the right time and it was natural for everybody to feel proud about it. You know? I mean, the whole country got together and patriotism was slowly rising. It has that the sort of like timeless quality to it. Uh, and also I think the fact that um, the, the National Pledge was actually incorporated into the song. So that made everybody like, you know, able to identify with it. Everybody, I hope everybody knows you know, the Pledge. Because of the lyrics that was uh, written, it made, it would naturally make every Singaporean feel very proud. It makes you feel like you're part of a community. It makes you feel you're at home. There's a part for everyone who was a star of instilling in the minds of people that you can play a part in this country. Stand Up for Singapore was a call for all of them, please do stand up for Singapore. And the next message to them was, count on me Singapore. Thereafter, we thought it'd be good for Singaporeans to come together and say who we are. And what do we have? What stake do we have in this country? So that's where we are Singapore come in. And within which is an identification that this is my country, this is my flag, this is my friend. The motivation, of course, came from Lee Kuan Yew. His speech in 1966 to uh, the school principals. Ultimately, the result that we want, and I'm sure you must want this, is to produce a community that feels together. Certain things, it responds together. This is my country, this is my flag, this is my president. This is my future. I'm going to protect it. That was what he said. So, we get, get the speech, gave it to Hugh Harrison from Canada. This is your third song. And he wrote that in a beautiful song called We Are Singapore. And he built the plat in it. For me, We Are Singapore required a, a lot of soul searching in a sense because Richard Tan was talking about creating something anthemic. So I had to look deep into it and obviously there was inspiration in the words of Lee Kuan Yew, the idea of the shared feelings. That's where the feeling of unity comes from, that you've always shared the same experience. So I was looking for some element, something that made people feel more bound to each other as Singaporeans. Hugh and I talked about, you know, what happens if we were to try and uh, put, put the pledge to music? Hugh said, yeah, I think it's possible. I said, but you know, musically it's almost impossible because the pledge is not written like lyrics, you know. And you would have to tweak in order to, for it to fall in the right place musically. And I said, but you cannot do that. The, the pledge is uh, like the words of the national anthem is sacred. You can't actually, you can't change anything. We managed to cross the hurdle and bring it to the National Day Parade and everybody sang, including PM Lee Kuan Yew and the rest of the cabinet. They sang the pledge. To me, the, the pledge had a natural rhythm. It doesn't have built-in rhymes necessarily, but then a lot of things don't. We Are The World doesn't have a rhyme scheme in it either. But you just follow the words, you follow the rhythm, it, it builds and it builds and it builds towards a chorus. And and that's how I started with the pledge, as a bridge, a transition from what they had been singing to what they were going to sing, which is to be, we are Singapore at the end. It really was a melodic transition from one to the other. I think I must say, when I first started singing it, um, you know, it, it didn't get the, the whole essence of it, didn't really get to me until I, I sang a few times, right? And it sort of grows on you, you know, this song, and then the fact that um, it talks about, you know, uh, the difference that it talks about how, you know, Singapore used to be struggling, but now we are progressing as, an, as a nation and stuff like that. So it gives you that 
positive feel good feeling so i think that's what uh makes it i suppose a, a different so we came at a time where it was right to to push patriotic songs it was a time where people felt that we we needed to come together and they needed to feel what, what the country is about and so all the symbolism in the songs and the lyrics as written by Hugh Harrison captured all of that and, and, and made that moment so much more grand. Being young at that time uh, and to be selected to do a national song in Singapore um, is very exciting because it is a privilege at the end of the day. Every, everyone right up to today, if you get to sing the national song and be part of the National Day celebration, is truly a privilege. I felt very privileged to be part of that whole, uh, the, the, the team, you know, with Robert and Roslinda and Jonathan, and to be selected in those days. Um, to me, it was a big deal. My father used to be a police officer, so he actually proudly asked me to, you know, lead a singing session at the police station. So that was, uh, yeah. Something nice. I felt very proud. I think the song, as we started having more and more different uh, Singapore songs coming up in, in for all the past National Day, somehow when I get the feedback from my friends and family, I mean, most of them would always say the old songs, the old national songs, meaning the Stand Up for Singapore, Count on Me Singapore, We Are Singapore. Those were the ones that sort of made an impact, I think, a bigger impact in people's uh, uh, memories and, and gave them a sense of pride to be Singaporean. Some people said it was very chest thumping, but I think we were at a part of the national psyche which we needed to actually chest thump to, to tell ourselves that we are good enough to compete with the world. And, and I think the song did its job. Sometimes, you know, the, the lyrics were a bit too simplistic, a bit too obvious perhaps, not quite metaphorical enough, but it served its purpose. And I think in terms of the hook, We Are Singapore, it gives you something to chant. And I think that's a good thing. Was it necessary? Could, could the nation have been built without these songs? Could people feel patriotic? I don't know. I think all effort can contribute towards it. As long as I'm with my friends and fellow Singaporeans, that song will still hold because we are Singaporeans. You know, this is what um, we all grew up with. You know, this is home, so we are Singaporeans. I think that was what the song was trying to, uh, to evoke, the feelings of, of, of national, true national pride, you know. So I always believe that a, a, a nation who sings together stays together. When we first discussed um, the use of uh, We Are Singapore, we have to remember that this song is 30 years old. That's a long time, in 30 years, a lot has changed in the world. The world around us is different. The internet, social media, all, all, all things are, are very different. One of the things that came to mind strongly to me is this. In the past, we if we kept kind of saying, also because of the way it's written, we go, we are Singapore. The emphasis on Singapore, which is national nation building. But I thought about, instead of we are Singapore, how about we are Singapore? The whole point about we. People, people owning this thing, the future, the family, the flag, everything. And um, who shall we involve in this process? I thought that um, of, the, of the demographic between the 20s and the 30s specifically, and um, I wanted to find their voice in this and whether this, these things resonated with them. Yep, you have some people that, oh, national things, I'm not sure. But then with some of the people I spoke to, they actually resonated with this whole idea to say, yep, you know, things aren't perfect and we're not sure. There's a lot of change going on in our country, a lot of change going on in the world. But this thing that you're proposing, this whole thing about this is, at the end of the day, this is my country. I can feel for this. And so the challenge was to write something that came from the heart that addressed these things, that addressed change, 
that address uncertainty, imperfection, but yet the fact that this still belongs to us. Write a preface so that we can look at this song in a new light. So it is the same song. We're not changing the song. The content of the song is not different. It's just a different preface, but because you read the preface to the book, you read the preface to the song, the song suddenly can be viewed in a new light. What still resonates with us? So what resonates with us is, we are Singapore and this is my country. So out of the various um, uh, things were submit, that were submitted over a period of time, um, there's this song that came that uh, th there were these set of lyrics that uh, really grabbed me and um, to me hit the nail on the head because this is about a younger generation actually wanting to possess the problems and not just push it away and blame someone else. The change starts here, not somebody else, right? How easy we forget that everything takes time. Nothing's ever perfect, but I call, still call you mine. So that's it. This, this song, the, this writer, had, had, he just nailed it on the head. He, and this is from his heart. This is Charlie Lim. Yeah, I got the call from, from Dr. Sid you know, to, uh, to kind of write an intro slash preface for uh, We Are Singapore. And um, yeah, in, in a way, I, I felt like this, is, this was even harder than writing a song from scratch, you know, because um, you're adding a new part uh, onto something that's already so embedded in like the, the Singaporean like consciousness, right? Like this is such an old, uh, familiar song you know, it's, that everybody knows already. So yeah, it was it was a bit daunting, you know, taking on this 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 task. I think the question that we can ask, and and, and the brief that Doctor Sid gave me was very relevant. I think to what we are going through. I didn't even know if I was going to sing this tune. Um, you know, I was just asked to write it. Um, so yeah, I, I did the demo vocal right here in my bedroom, and uh, that track is actually going on the song. So that's you know quite a surprise, but um, I'm glad uh, they liked it. So yeah, it's a big honor to be part of this. Well, so when we first put this idea out, we're not really sure how it would be. Uh, it would be because you know they're all a little like thoughts in your head but at each level that we've had to discuss this and present this and bring it about we've actually had very very favorable reactions first of all they say yeah we love Charlie's voice and we like the the song and all that kind of but many of them said that we feel for what this song is saying and and where the shift is going you know so um, I'm hopeful I hope that um, you know Singaporeans will be moved, challenged, touched by this song and um, you know, love our country more and you know, yeah. I was very delighted when I heard that the NDP Exco wanted to use this song because this is a time where globalization has somehow impacted on our people's psyche. When Sydney presented the bridge, the, the bridge to the current era, I think he analysed it correctly that 30 years ago, the ethos was different, the feeling was different. People were coming out of the newly independent country trying to find themselves as to who they are, what they are. But they have found themselves. Okay, although now there's a bit of questioning as, as to what's happening with all the globalization affecting us. But they are modern. People are having greater outlook. They've seen the world out there. They travel a lot more. The whole point of the tune, and, and I guess the, the sentiment is like, let's not look at things through rose-tinted glasses. Let's not deny that people aren't happy about certain things. Um, at the same time, it's, I, I don't think like being apathetic is the answer. So it's, it's really about taking ownership, uh, you know, to, to quote the alliance, like, you know, being that change that you want to see. So if, if people, you know, resonate with that, if it inspires them or encourages them, then like, you know, my, my job is done. So I really hope that message, uh, you know, gets, uh, that comes across well. I don't think that we should ever go into creating or writing with a viewpoint to trying to please an audience or I think it's to write from the heart, from the point of view, what you see and perceive in life and culture around you, then it's, then it's true. It's an honour that Singaporeans would take We Are Singapore and want to keep it alive 
keep it part of the future by modernizing the introductory verses and making that relevant to the younger people so they too can continue to share in that common mantra of we are Singapore and Singapore is us. We are Singapore. We are Singaporeans. And I'm glad to see that it's modernized and I hope to continue to see it being relevant to Singapore and its people because Singapore is its people. It was something that is needed in this time to bring the old spirit back. You cannot just take the We Are Singapore and then hope that people will embrace it and feel for it, especially the younger generation. So the modern bridge towards it will make this work. I'm very confident of it. But you know, when home came about 20 years ago and words like, when I'm feeling low, it was like, how can you have a song like that? But now when we're putting out a song 30 years later, a song with lyrics that talks about uncertainty and imperfection, we're not getting a reaction that says, hey, you cannot have a national song like that. So that's good. And additionally to that, um, the progression from the 30 years ago when the voice and what the songs were saying were commissioned from an official level, progressing to home. And Dick is saying, this is home truly. It's the voice of the son of the soil. And here when Charlie's talking, it's not perfect, but I still call you mine. It is the voice of the son of the soil. This is important. This is the voice of people. And you know, that progression to me is a sign of the maturing of a nation and hopefully you know it is is a good thing ready 2 3 there was a time when people said that singapore won't make it but we did Ha, 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 ha.